So hello, my name is Leo Kama, and I'm here to talk to you yet again about the right to left status in the legal office. Um, we'll go over a few of the basics. Um, we'll start with a brief um, what is right to left and a bit of the history, because that part of the presentation doesn't change from year to year, I probably do it quite quickly. So one of the first writing systems uh, Form script, which you actually use the chisel on some clay or something like that. So it was used to be written from right to left because usually you would hold the hammer in your right hand and the chisel on your left hand and do something like this. And this is obviously easier for right to left and not the other way around. Later on in history, uh, we moved to uh, Phoenician, which is something that around 1000 BC and they invented the, in English it's called the Abjad script it's actually a translation of letters in Hebrew which the idea is that they actually use letters instead of uh, little pictures that's what, for example, uh, is the difference between the Egyptian hieroglyphs and modern writing systems later on another um, development was Aramaic and they moved to square scripts, something we're mostly uh, known today, that can be in a rough estimate uh, compared to CGK or uh, some Indian languages. When you see little, uh, it's still letters or, um, or it's not pictures, but it's, uh, I'm not sure I'll describe it correctly, you probably can correct me. Um, but the idea is that the work is from some signs which are not necessary letters, so every sign has a meaning. Um, the move in uh, Aramaic was to square ones, uh, which roughly are fixed space, and which is today obviously is important for computers. Uh, both Hebrew and Arabic are a continuation of this flow, and Hebrew especially is relatively similar to Aramaic. Uh, in later period, uh, Greek and Latin switched from right to left to left to right. And one of the, let's say, modern examples which happened around uh, a thousand years ago was Hungarian, which you can see the documentation on the Hungarian, which are right to left, versus New Hungarian, which is left to right. Uh, for the last conference, we actually fixed the bug in the river office to support all the Hungarian. I have no idea who needs it, but why not? Um, just a reminder about languages, because this whole few talks are about languages, that there is a difference between um, language that can be written, spoken language that can be written in a few scripts, and a script that can be used for some languages. Okay? Uh, a few examples are mainly in the area of, uh, let's say, India and Central Asia, and also scripts, Latin, Arabic, and Cyrillic are being used to different languages. Uh, a few examples of uh, LibreOffice interfaces, the interface you all know, simple uh, English interface. Then you can see the interface in English but in right to left mode. You can see the menus are on the other side. All the properties of windows move to the left side. Uh, the new file menu or icon is over here, so everything is changed. Uh, a misconception is that everything is mirrored. It's true for, for a lot of objects, but not for all of them. Some of the logic needs to be amended, so it's not just replace X and Y. Although it's the basic idea, but it's not always true. The same interface is just a few translation, and it's most of the kind of reading. Um, same for our way, same for other languages. Um, if you haven't seen previous lectures, so the way to enable the right to left support, it's not by default, you have to take this icon, I hope you can see it. Um, and then after restarting the new office, it's actually, uh, you get a few more options. These options, for example, are uh, the way to, to set the paragraph directionality, both in the upper menu, both in the properties menu, and that's uh, quite important. Um, there's a, an automatic uh, way to recognize the language, so if I start typing Hebrew, in a lot of cases, it would be the direction.
the landing will change uh, to right to left, alignment will be from to the right, which is good, but sometimes you need to hit them with the buttons, or sometimes you want to force them to be on the other direction, um, so the buttons are very useful. Um, the slide is based on what I showed uh, last year and obviously the fixes. So, interest in general is our weakest point regarding right to left support. We will see an example in a few minutes. Um, it's very nice that uh, since the last conference, two uh, talk about spot fix. Okay, one which was very 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 numbering. Uh, you had uh, one to nine, then ten, uh, then eleven, because it's the same two digits, and then you have 21, 32, because it switched. 13 to 31, 14 to 41, it was completely weird. That got fixed in version uh, 6.0. And then another problem with um, weak characters uh, got fixed for 6.1, and that uh, helps make some of the text more readable. Uh, we still have uh, two issues. The first one, I'll show you an example in a minute. And well, I'll show you. Okay, so this is the first part, this is the animation part, and this is a bug being reported. So this is a bug being reported in 2012. This is the English option, no problem, it goes well. This is the animation in Hebrew. So some of that disappears, like the logic is weird, but do it again. By the way, this is the second animation effect, okay? So it's a circular in uh, left to right uh, text, and then you see the effect in the middle of the text, and then something is added and subtracted. No idea what's going on. Um, in last year, um, the effect was a little different. It was the text entering to the screen, and while the, the direction of the entrance was okay, the letters appeared in the wrong way. So the last letter of the sentence actually appeared first then the one before last, and when the animation ended, the order of the whole sentence changed and it could be readable. So each animation has its own problem, it's something good with the base logic, and think that you get a presentation from whoever, whatever, if the animation looks like this, you think the software is crap, you don't try to do anything else. And this is why we rank this bug as one of the top bugs for Impress, because it gives the user uh, very bad impression and makes him not consider using this the program furthermore. And it's not only a technical problem, it's created a marketing issue and other stuff. With this I can't go to any to any company or any marketing person and tell them when you should consider the press for uh, him or other people. The second part is uh, Example of uh, text, a uh, sentence that start with weak characters, sorry, with uh, strong left to right characters. In this, in this case, the beginning of the sentence is the word English, uh, a hyphen, and then text in right to left script. Uh, this is Hebrew, this is Arabic. Okay, the problem is, at least for Hebrew it's okay, but for Arabic you see the text is not readable at all. And what I do is I just remove them so you can see it. But if I remove the English word at the beginning, suddenly the Arabic text it looks okay. So this is an important issue, it's not critical because usually the sentence will begin with uh, text in Arabic and not in English. But in the few cases it would. Um, it's not completely not true, but you can compare the letters, and especially this word, which is completely unbelievable in, in this case. Okay, so this was the, the second bag I want to show you.
newly reported, so I think it was it got reported in March, but the guy reporting it to reproduce it back to version 3.5. So it's not a new bug, it just reported recently, and that's let's uh, say powerful. Or as the right to left team or the right to left uh, uh, speakers, people, whatever community, uh, that we didn't report it on time. But on the other hand, even bugs that reported six years ago are still not fixed. Um, but we're very happy for other bugs to be fixed, and thank you very much for the developers. Um, as you can see, writer is in general already. There, there are some issues, but none of them is critical. Uh, two issues got fixed in uh, the previous versions. Uh, one in 6.0, one in 6.1, which makes us again very happy. Um, with Writer, we can actually offer our um, to for users to uh, use it uh, with confidence that it would be okay. It's not perfect, but the support is good enough for day-to-day -day use. There's nothing that critical going on. Um, you can see it from that far. So this was the idea to give some perspective about the amount of bugs being fixed. I have a, a bigger picture, and I hope you can see it. The idea is that for the version uh, 6.0, which was uh, the one after the previous conference, we had a lot of relatively a lot of bugs that got fixed. Usually we see this increase uh, because we talk to the developers because of talks like this that uh, highlight some of the major problems. And again, it's an opportunity to say thank you very much. And then usually after the conference we have a high bug schedule fixed. And then the next version has a lower uh, amount of bugs being fixed, which is okay, but we try to get more and more bugs fixed. The benefit is that with time passes, the, the criticalness of bugs gets lower and lower. Okay, so already for 6.1 we got two bugs fixed, and we'll see about the next version. Uh, everything you see here is from the wiki page on the Document Foundation uh, wiki system. So we document all the bugs and the history of what was fixed where, and also what got backported to other versions. So if a bug is being fixed on master, we try to make sure it's uh, being backported. Then usually that's my job, first to track things, second to make sure um, changes go to other branches. Um, just to give you a general idea about bug categories, we have a few. Uh, some of them are uh, language support, they, help, they happen only with, sorry, right to left language support, happens only with right to left languages, they don't have others. Uh, then we have the directionality problems, which are regardless of which language, even English, but in right to left directionality, it has a problem. Then we have interface problems, Some, sometimes things happen only when you use right to left interface, regardless of the language or content. Um, that might be stuff that um, the positioning is wrong, the logic behind the graphics is wrong, maybe an icon which is not shown or hidden by some other element, and sometimes things which are more complicated, like uh, logic which are different, depends on the UI directionality. And the harder, obviously, is uh, things which are a mix of the above, like your stuff that it, used to have a bug like this, that if you save a, uh, a document in right to left interface, some of the defaults in the files get changed to right to left, and then when you open it in, in, in another interface, you suddenly see things which are completely really weird. And you don't want the, the document contents to be irrelevant, to, to get changed depending on the interface. It might be a good idea for the default, but that's it. Um, there are some bugs which are specific for just one languages. As I show you, sometimes Arabic is, has other problems than Hebrew because it's a little bit more complicated with the connected uh, words and fonts. Um, that's why we separate things uh, to different metadata that I show you next. Um, where to focus for the next uh, versions because our top bugs get very helpful. Um, some of the next issues we think or we see with our users is mostly interoperability issues with 
with Microsoft Office import and export. Um, Mikos just entered used to do a lot of uh, RTF and some other filters uh, uh, fixes for us, which was great. Uh, we still see some issues, but their importance goes, goes uh, lower and lower. But as we saw, uh, as we can see in this one, um, there used to be a problem when you put right to left text in comments, it's got to reverse on export. When you see it in uh, Microsoft Office, it it's can be read, or it can be read from the other direction. And that's a big problem. This one was fixed for 6.1. Um, we still see some of these issues, but again, the direction we see is very good and we're happy for it. Um, another thing we need to focus is impress and grow by, uh, by a fact of it. Because they have a different uh, editing engine or uh, rendering engine than uh, Calc and uh, Writer. And then sometimes we have to fix bugs twice, one for each engine. And that's another issue which probably you, need to guys, you guys need to deal with on other aspects. But for, our, for us, we need to double check each time the logic and everything else. And then, obviously, sometimes you fix, it's like a blanket, you put one side, you get called on the other side. And we saw a few of these as well. But in press in general, as we saw earlier, is not, uh, it's not well supported enough for writer of languages. And another issue, and that's probably where I need the communities uh, backup and help, is how to create a better infrastructure uh, to test right to left out of the box. So when the developers run his, when when the developer commits and runs his test, there will be more stuff that run automatically and give feedback of the community, obviously. Um, and then we will save bugs from being reported or noticing problems only when the feature is complete um, and this is something we probably need to find out how to do it. Um, from our side, or the community side, um, at least what we did last year was to create a telegram channel uh, for both right to left and uh, Hebrew, Arabic. Uh, I was sorry to be didn't have enough users uh, so they all Going to the right to left group, but they didn't have their own. Um, first, it really helped in triage bugging, bugs, reporting bugs, double checking them, getting some uh, Windows user into the group and checking them on, uh, sorry, checking them on Windows as well and uh, the interoperability bugs with uh, Microsoft. It was really helpful. We saw a lot of traffic in these areas. For example, for last year's presentation, I had to work three days checking a lot of bugs, checking the status, updating things, and this was just a basic work for the presentation. Presentation. This year, I sent uh, a virtual meetup uh, on the group. We decided a uh, date and time. We had about eight people that had. We covered about 50 bugs uh, in something like three hours and a few retreats in the uh, next few days. And I got a status. I, it's easy to report. It's easy to report. You also get. I also got feedback from others. What do they think are the problems, or where should the focus be, or if there is something that really um, prevents them to work, and they would like me to present it here. And it's the differences of community when you have a team work. Even if it's a relatively small team, it's still a completely you know, different uh, role. Uh, separating of balance of. Um, Workload and things move much faster than we saw it in the last year. Uh, also, we had uh, Yusef who did a lot of work on QA, connecting us to other parts of the community, especially in the QA world, helping with metabugs, metabugs of other parts of the UI or engine, and that helped to get a lot of focus on developers by triaging all the bugs this way. Um, what we, we started following, uh, what I told you about the the box yet again is trying to assess what would be the five top bugs we need help from the community to fix. As you saw, we have the list from last year and bugs are starting to get fixed, so we need to fill the place with what's our top priority. And we 
with past experience from top to the developers, if I tell them I have three bugs, I want you to fix it's easier, or please have to fix these three bugs, it's easier than to tell them, well, I have a wiki page with about 100 bugs, please take a look. Okay, focusing people really helps. So the result of this process will go back to the wiki page. And the plan is to repeat this process every six months with the release, so we can reassess things. At the moment it happens in good times every year, in bad times every two years. So we want to increase uh, the frequency. Um, I talked earlier about uh, MetaHubs. So we, we already had the CTL bug in, after uh, last session. We added one for Hebrew and one for Arabic and it really helps to uh, triage bugs and then send them to, like, like say, a sub-community or sub-group and say, okay, this is just a uh, Hebrew related, okay? But the other guys uh, double check that. Or oh, I find a bug uh, in Hebrew. Well, I have an example for Hebrew. I go to the other community, ask them, does it happen for Arabic as well? If yes, it's a right to left or CTL bug. If not, it's just a Hebrew bug. And that goes on both ways. And we saw it, it to be a very efficient process when you need just one person from each sub community and then you know if it's a in general issue or very specific issue. Um, some of the other things we uh, want to get done, and this is a, a bigger effort, and if you have leads or ideas where to start, I would be happy to, to get the ideas, is first raising awareness, and this is one of the goals of this talk. The other one is getting uh, test uh, scenarios for automation, as I talked earlier. Um, one of the things we did in the session I mentioned earlier is to add test documents to bugs which were lacking in these documents. We keep doing it so even people without the ability to read the Hebrew or Arabic could have a test document, a picture of how, it's, how it looks or the problem, even with a red circle or something like that. And then when they fix or want to check if, if there is a regression or sometimes another fix uh, made an effect, they can do it easily even without reading the language or at least noticing there is a change and then flagging, us, flagging that for us uh, and then we double check it. Uh, another challenge and that's the point that is also relevant to uh, some of the stuff I saw in other sessions, mainly by Italo, is that how do you recruit more people from native speakers uh, with languages which are right to left and have millions of speakers but they're not part of our community. There is 350 million Arabic speakers, 160 million Urdu speakers, uh, 120 Punjabi speakers and 1 million Farsi speakers and I think there's no representation for them in our community. And that's more than 500 million people, uh, which we could reach or have possible as uh, users and of course contributors. And it's very hard. It's, sometimes it's technological, uh, technical, but sometimes it's um, more of a cultural gap or to reach these people. How do you work with them? Um, if you have any ties, especially maybe some of the Asian guys that might meet these people in conferences, please refer them to the slides, to the Telegram group, to the wiki, everything that will make them be a little bit involved will be very helpful. And of course, email to me, I would be happy to uh, be the bridge. I guess that in some places there might be politics and the fact that I'm from Israel might be a problem. Then I'm happy to provide other people from the community which might not arouse any political issues. Um, I think the result is much more important than for me to be the connection. And if someone likes to bring a better result, I'm fine with that. The goal is to get better in the office, whoever the personas are. Um, we still try to find ways to train uh, local developers. Specifically, I'm talking about Israel, but it could be in other countries. Um, I know that there might some be opportunities uh, from local companies if you like uh, a vacation in somewhere 
you probably will be willing to pay for your travels and in exchange for a workshop about how to hack LibreOffice. Might be an interesting deal. Yes, obviously there is commercial options from my, our sponsors, but we also have independent developers and that could be a completely different uh, experience. Um, especially with communities who might prefer to work with an individual and not a commercial company. Uh, and there's always weird nights or whatever if you're in that side of the world, just say hi. Um, we try to cooperate with the CJK speakers, uh, both with uh, meetings uh, and have at least a few representatives in the groups because some issues might be crossing between languages and uh, problem from um, languages groups. So that would be complex type of uh, languages. Um, and there's a Wi-Fi and there's a QR code to join our group. You're more than welcome. Um,